In this video, I want to walk through this three-step process for applying for the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Now, this is uh, the most current guide we have right now from the SBA. As of right now, they're telling us that there is uh, seven to eight billion dollars already earmarked. So we're going with the uh, eight billion dollars for now. We think there might be 50 billion dollars coming. We've seen a few uh, bills being held up in Congress. And obviously, uh, we can't influence the uh, politics as of right now, but we do expect more money coming straight from the SBA uh, into each and every state's SBA office. So that's good news for everybody who's looking for capital. So as of right now, the way everything stands uh, here on March 23rd is as follows. Let me just zoom in here on this current PDF. And we'll be updating this, um, obviously, with another YouTube video in the next couple of days as we get new information. So basically, if you're not familiar yet with how these loans work, typical bank loans come directly from banks, number one. Number two, typical SBA loans actually don't come from the SBA itself. They actually come from the banks. The SBA simply guarantees the loan to the bank, but you're still working with your local banker to get a typical SBA loan. So that's number two. Now, these loans, these disaster loans are completely different. So this is very important for you to know. These loans are actually coming directly from the SBA. They actually act as a bank in times of disaster like this. So there's no Bank of America, no JP Morgan Chase, you know, no local bank, no local credit union involved in these disaster loans as of right now, as of March 23rd. All right. So the process is you're actually applying to the SBA for these disaster loans. All right. Now the terms here, we'll get to those in just one second, but they're low interest term loans. So they're not lines of credit that you can kind of pull whenever you want. These are actual term loans. They come to an underwriting decision of how much money they want to give you. The terms are flexible as far as the length of repayment to be determined by the underwriter and the actual borrower. And they are typically gonna be long-term disaster loans. Now, the business businesses that are eligible are small businesses, which is pretty much under $38.5 million in revenue and under 1,500 employees. So 90% of businesses will actually qualify for these funds. Private nonprofit organizations, even homeowners and renters can also apply for these loans. Keep that in mind. And uh, but primarily the SBA uh, current loans are going to be for typically for operating businesses. All right. And what you can do if you're in a true disaster area, it's been affected by you know actual natural disasters, unfortunately that's going on right now, there's been some fires, some tornadoes, then once again, you'll be applying directly to the SBA. Okay, so this is the general disaster loan application process and the minimum criteria. And this is subject to change, we hear it is gonna change, meaning we think there's up to $50 billion potentially coming and the size of the loans and the terms of the loans may change. But as of right now, here's how everything is looking. Um, and this is the three-step process to actually apply. We've put through right now about a dozen or so businesses, and they are going through the application process right now. So the way it works is you actually need to apply online. And, our, and before you do that, you need to prepare a lot of different financial information. You're going to need to uh, prepare your financial statements personal and business. You need to prepare your tax information. You need to prepare your monthly financials. You need to prepare your forecast and the narrative of why you need the capital. It's very important as of right now. So once you have all those together, we can certainly help you if you need help with that. Once you have all those together, here are the basics. You apply for the loan. You can apply up to $2 million. The types of businesses are right here. Up to 2 million, they stated again. As of right now, homeowners cannot apply for the COVID loan. This is for actual natural disasters, okay? So after you submit the application, you're gonna hear back from the SBA in some way, shape or form. They're gonna review your credit score. They're gonna review your business financial statements. They're gonna see if you have additional credit available from banks. And they're also gonna, again, look at the narrative and see how much money do you stand to lose due to the COVID virus. 
And so all those things are very important. The most important of which as of right now is that narrative. Why do you need money? Are you going to drop revenue? Are your customers going to stop paying? Are they going to go out of business? Uh, do you need to lay off employees? Are you going to stop buying products from local businesses? All of these things are super important because they will determine the amount of money and how urgently the SBA thinks you need capital. If you can demonstrate that you needing the money or having the money will help to keep people employed and keep businesses in business as well. So just keep that in mind. All right. You also need to have some form of insurance. We often recommend that. Again, if you have uh, revenue disruption insurance, you can actually show that. Um, the SBA is primarily interested in lending to people who have not enough insurance coverage and not enough credit available from traditional banks. They want to essentially fill the gap and they don't necessarily want to be your only uh, or one out of many choices. They want to be your only choice if that's all you have. The SBA looks favorably upon that. So once you submit your information, the loan officer is going to work with you or your designated representative to provide the necessary information. This is where they're going to come back and, and question some things. They're going to look for, again, a deeper narrative. They're going to look at your personal and your business tax returns, your financials. They want to see that you actually need this money. All right, so once you go through that, they're telling us right now it's going to take a couple of weeks to actually get a decision after you submit the loan application. The loan application can take a couple of days if you have all your information together. It can take a couple of weeks if you don't. All right, so keep in mind that this timeline is at a minimum two to three weeks after you submit information. So if you urgently need money now and you've got about 30 days left of capital, I suggest that you get your materials together and that you apply today. So after you submit your application, you'll then start speaking with a loan officer. Again, you can hire someone to work with them instead of you if you're not, if you don't have the time or you're not confident in doing it. And again, discussing the materials and really pushing the need for capital is the number one most important thing. Next, number three, what happens here is you'll actually get the loan closed. Again, as of March 23rd, they're telling us they're going to start to release funds in the beginning of April. So hopefully that means seven days at the, at the, latest. It could mean a couple of weeks. We're still unsure as of right now, March 23rd. But as we start to get funds flowing, we'll continue to post more updates and you'll have a better idea of how quickly you can get capital. Now, these may not apply to physical damage, but the economic injury definitely does. Again, if you're losing money, if you need to lay people off, if your vendors can't give you product, if your customers can't pay, these are all very, very serious economic injuries that you're going to be sustaining. And we need to, to show the SBA that you need capital to prevent these from happening. Once you have uh, submitted the application, you're going to have a, uh, and you actually get approved, you're going to have a case manager assigned with you to make sure that you meet all the loan conditions in the future. So if you have additional disbursements that are going to come your way, they will be looking at your financials. They want to make sure you're not just going to spend this money. They want to make sure you're going to use it wisely to pay for your liabilities, cover your rent and your lease, cover employees, pay your vendors. They don't necessarily want you to go and buy a bunch of equipment or uh, use this as a real estate loan. It's not at all the best use of proceeds. And they certainly will question and even challenge you if you do uh, not follow the guidelines. But in general, this loan is to be used for fixed monthly expenses, payroll, working capital, inventory, uh, necessary business travel, things that keep your business going and keep you alive, more or less. All right. So that is the three-step process as of right now. Uh, you can certainly uh, see some more information here on the specific things they're going to look for, including they're going to pull your business and your personal individual tax return information. They're going to get copies of your personal and business financial statements. They want to see what you have for collateral. They want to see this kind of how you look financially as well. What they're also telling us, and they've been backing this up, they can't necessarily decline your loan application if you have poor credit and if you do not have collateral, but it's obviously possible you will not get the loan. And if, if that does happen, it's either because your credit profile is super, super weak, or you haven't properly demonstrated financial need, or if your materials are very, very messy and unprofessional, there is no way they can actually process the application. So those are the three things we're seeing right now as to why applications get kicked back very quickly. 
And obviously, a solid financial basis, good tax returns, a good forecast, a good narrative, and a crystal clear application that submits all the information correctly the first time. That's how you're going to get this loan right into the hands of the SBA lender. And uh, this is how you're going to get that capital as quickly as possible. Okay, everyone. So if you need help, certainly we've included some links so you can learn more. We walk through a whole video of how all of this works, uh, exactly what you need to submit and when, the timeline that you should be expecting. Um, and we're going to show you how we can obviously also help as well. So, so check out the video description. You can see a link. You'll see a landing page. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. We're happy to help you get this loan taken care of. Looking forward to working with you.